Hey there everybody, Troy from Flying Squirrel. It is now the second week of the year and it has been a cold one <laughs> uh, for most of us. Um, I haven't gotten outdoors much at all because uh, it's been really, really, really cold. Um, I hope some of you though did brave the weather and got out to see some of the things we talked about last week. Um, I managed to get up early Saturday morning to go see Venus and Jupiter, sorry, Jupiter and Mars um, in conjunction. It was beautiful, but the wind was blowing. It was negative 10 or so wind chill, um, and I was bundled up, so my picture did not come out crisply, but here's what I got. It's pretty cool to see Jupiter and Mars not only next to each other, but to also capture all four of the uh, inner Galilean moons of Jupiter. It was pretty cool. I'll, I'll put a link below of uh, how I know which moon was which, because uh, if you watch Jupiter, you'll notice they zip around a lot. This week, I want to talk about, there's not a whole lot specific going on, but of course we're in the middle of a cold, dark winter section with long nights and beautiful clear skies. And so I want to start to talk about how you can use an awareness of the stars to establish time and place and start kind of hopping between constellations and help you figure out where you are in the world. Okay, so this is part one of two, actually. Uh, part one. I want to talk about timing and some keys to understanding kind of the big clock that is the sky. And then we're done with that. Part two, we'll be talking about um, specific constellations in the winter night sky and kind of hand holding you through walking from one region to another to just start to get that mental map in place and understanding what's there uh, for future reference. So that's the way we'll do this, okay? Let's go. So first off, quiz question. Last week was a super moon. It was a full moon on Monday, which means what are we getting this week? Last quarter, um, also on Monday, um, which means the moon won't be rising until about midnight, which means you've got a nice dark sky up until that point. All right, so let's talk about timing. To discuss that, I want to introduce a concept called the ecliptic. Now, the ecliptic is an imaginary line in space that lines up with the plane of the solar system. Okay, if you imagine Earth here and the, the sun, the planets, they're all in a big disk, right? So if you're on the surface looking out at that disk, you can imagine a circle of stars that surround us that are in line with that plane. It's called the ecliptic because when the moon crosses that plane, eclipses can happen. <laughs> so, but it's much more than that. It's where you're going to find the sun. It's where you're going to find all the planets. It's where you're going to find the moon, you know, plus or minus a little bit above and, be, above and below. There's kind of a natural built-in calendar and clock around the stars that line up with the ecliptic. Chances are you know most of these constellations, even if you can't look up in the sky and pick them out. They're the zodiac. All of the signs, you know, what's your sign, all of that. Um, those constellations are along the ecliptic, and there are 12 of them. One for each month, conveniently. Um, and if you break down that full circle, that means that there are one constellation for every 30 degrees of sky. 30 degrees, when you start to rotate this whole system, equates to about two hours of time. Each constellation is two hours. We all come in with a built-in angular measurement system. Um, it just so happens that if you put your arm out, or your fist out at arm's length, your fist is about 10 degrees wide. This works for everybody. If you're a small person, your fist is smaller, but so is your arm. <laughs> if you're a big person, your arm's typically longer. So it's the angle we're concerned about, not the specific distance. That's about 10 degrees, which means that a fist plus two is about 15 degrees, and that's about an hour. It takes about a star about an hour to move every 15 degrees. So three fists together is 30 degrees. That's going to be the apparent width of that constellation, and that's two hours time. Okay, so if you think of the sky broken up into two hour chunks of time, each occupied by one of these calendar reference points that's marked by a zodiac constellation, it's almost looking like a clock at a clock with the numbers printed on it, uh, except each one is two hours instead of one hour. Okay, most people are used to looking at the sun and figuring out, okay, where is it in the sky, how much daylight have I got left, all that kind of stuff. Once the sun goes down though, uh, people lose it because frankly the sky is different every night. But if you can establish this map of where are those constellations in particular can map out those uh, zodiac constellations across the ecliptic, you can actually break down the sky into quadrants. Twelve of them, yeah, that means you've got three between this horizon and straight north-south, three this way, 
six on the opposite side of the planet. Before I go any further, I know that there's a difference between this plane of the ecliptic and this plane of the equator, which is where we're actually rotating. It does make a difference, obviously, and the farther away from the tropics, the bigger difference you've got. But it builds an awareness, and it's generally an understanding. So why would you use this, or how would you use this? Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say I've been inside for a month. I haven't really been paying attention to what's going on. I go out on an overnight backpacking trip, and I'm out in the wilderness somewhere. I watch a beautiful sunset. Um, and as the sun's going down, I look the other way, away from the glare, and I notice I can just barely see Gemini on the horizon. So without even looking, without staring at stars and trying to figure out, I know if Gemini's on the horizon, I've got Gemini, Taurus, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, the sun's probably in Sagittarius. Okay, why is that useful? Well, fast forward, uh, I get up in, the middle of the up in the middle of the night to go use the bathroom. And it takes me a minute. The stars are blinding. It's a completely different sky. Orient yourself, though, and say, oh, well, I can see all of Virgo. I can see enough sky that it should be Libra over there, which means Scorpio's just about to come up. I've got about an hour before the uh, sun, sky starts to lighten, two hours before sunrise. Another example, just really quick, when I went to see Jupiter and Mars the other night, I can't actually see those from my house because of trees in the way. So before I went out and ventured into the cold and got to a point and lugged a telescope and a camera and all of this to go take a look, I needed another reference. And so knowing where they are in the sky, which is right at Libra, before I waste time, I ought to be able to look up and see Leo either at or just past the north-south line, my local meridian. And if Leo's in the right spot, that means I'm going to be able to see what I'm looking for. Then I can venture up and walk, you know, again, and that was, even though I know the time, <laughs> it's very nice to be able to look up and say, yeah, those stars are where they ought to be before I commit to that. Again, we're talking in generalities, but I, I get this instant awareness. And the more you do this, and the more you can use the sky as a map of where you are, you know, when you start out, it's like, well, there's that star, that must be this, that must be that. You get to the point where you can just go out and boom, there's three or four easily recognizable landmarks. I know what's going on. And it's a general awareness. And by the way, if there's one thing I've noticed about people who are in this community, an awful lot of you are really proud and happy to be able to do things without relying on modern technology. <laughs> this is the ultimate example of that, right? Even if there's just a cool factor of knowing how to do this, being able to tell a maple from a sycamore, right? I mean, it's there's just that general pride of knowledge and awareness, but it really is a useful tool if you get there. There's a general understanding. So let's go outside. Let's start talking about what you can see in the night sky um, in the wintertime and start to build that map for you, okay?